a double-digit lead for Connecticut. A wild offensive series for them because El Amin was on the bench. But look at the bounce they get. Robertson in the right spot, right time, puts it away, stretches this lead to 11, and it really put some electricity through this building during the break. The game reset, 58 to 47. UConn, Syracuse, led it 45-44. Huskies on a 14 to 2 run. Blackwell a three, no good. Shumpert leaning in. Oh. He didn't want to shoot that ball just then. He didn't have the confidence going through the lane. UConn in control. They're going to have to start trapping. Here comes the Syracuse trap. Looking for opportunities to trap if you can along the sideline. Freeman gives it off. Vosco rolls in and a foul. And Kevin Freeman just then making a nice decision, too, to get that ball going towards the basket. A little bit of an indecision there with El Amin on the bench. But watch how he brings it to the middle. He gets reaction from Thomas. That puts Vasco in a better position because he gets the angle, he gets the shoulders ahead of Thomas, and he'll be able to deliver. Shoulders ahead, shot blocker behind you. You better get good results. 13 straight UConn points. Oh. Out to the outside and everything breaking for the Huskies right now. Three minutes to play in the game. And they're going to force the action defensively. Syracuse has to start trapping a little quicker. And start to gamble. Good work taking time off the clock here, though. Dang. Oh. Another offensive rebound, but this time Hart is able to take it away from Freeman. Might have to get good looks. In a hurry also. Just don't force it, though. Here's Hart trying to fend off. Goes around the basket and gives it away. Tony Robertson, the freshman, accelerates to the basket. And he's fouled. A collision with Schumpert. Glenn was there as well. And his accelerate such a great choice of words just then because when he got that basketball, it was it's spin, dribble, and go. You'll see the situation, the floating pass. They'll watch him come right down the left side of the floor, but put the burners on. He gets the angle. That's not going to work if you're Syracuse. Too much speed on that one play. Number two on Tony Bland. Robertson misses on the first attempt, 71%. You know, one thing about freshmen, Jim Calhoun will play you. If you have the ability, he doesn't look at a freshman and say, I don't trust him on the floor. And Robertson has gotten a chance this season. Able to hit on the second free throw. UConn extends the lead. 61 to 47. He's got Zogatron. I'll exchange it. Introducing e-merchandise return from the United States Postal Service. It's so simple, your customers can print a prepaid return label right from your website. Now the stuff they buy online practically returns itself. Easier exchanges for them means more business for you. What's your e-priority? Like so what's on for today? Boss wants you, me, and Charlie to take the new Silverado and move them bales. Is that Charlie? Chevy Silverado has the most powerful V8 of any 4x4 pickup. Then we gotta water the herd. 300 horses make it more powerful. If there's any daylight left, we'll take Norm up to see the ladies. More powerful than Ford and Dodge. That's why it's the truck. Silverado from Chevy. Well, I guess that's enough for today. There are many of you. There's you, the homemaker, and you, the homeowner. You, the gourmet, the paramedic, and the diplomat. You support the world, but who supports you? You are one of 68 million Americans who aren't getting enough sleep. The kind of deep sleep you get on a bed that uniquely cradles and supports your body as no other bed does. Oh, I love this bed. The crown jewel from Sealy Posturepedic. We support you night and day. When the bad guys bring out the big guns, Samo's got the upper hand. No gun, no problem. Nobody does it like Samo. Martial Law, CBS Tonight. CBS Sports Coverage of the Road to the Final Four is sponsored by Chevrolet Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. Sealy Posturepedic, we support you night and day. 
and by priority mail from the U.S. Postal Service. UConn leading at 61 to 47. Don't forget game three of our triple header here on CBS. Number one, Stanford playing host to UCLA. Ian Eagle and Jim Spinarco with you from Hartford. Not a bad appetizer for the Big East tournament next week, right? Absolutely. I mean, UConn has answered the bell a little bit. Jim Calhoun has turned that corner for his team, but it's still Khalid al yeah. team. When he plays well, as we touched on way back in the beginning of this basketball game, if he plays well, this team is going to play well, and he's done that. And the Orange men have gone ice cold, just searching for offense. Here's Hart on the dribble. Glenn pops to the outside. Shumpert. And it rims in for Preston Shumpert. Well, did they ever need him to score earlier than what he has? First number to go down for him this afternoon. One of eight from the field for Shumpert, who came in shooting 47% from three-point range. They double up on Robertson, trying to put some pressure on him. Shepard couldn't take it away from Freeman. He lays it home. Well, we've seen twice with Kevin Freeman trying to make basketball plays. A little bit of traffic, a little bit of trouble. Gets the ball and goes right into the paint, makes some things happen. Nice job for Kevin Freeman. Good all-around effort. 15 points, 9 rebounds. Hart in some trouble on the spin move. And a whistle finally stops play as it went to the interior. Coming up tonight on CBS, you can get things started with early edition. And of course, Samo and Arsenio on martial law. Wrap things up with Walker, Texas Ranger. That's all coming up tonight here on CBS. Preston Shepard, a natural shooter. He's a terrific wing player, but he just did not have it here today. And when you take a look at this guy, El Amin had it today, doing a good job of running this club. 7 of 19 from the floor, 6 assists with 19 points, but more importantly, getting guys the confidence, getting them the ball where they're most comfortable. In the last two and a half minutes, his teammates did a nice job while he was on the bench. Shumpert, 2 out of 2. Now the issue for Syracuse is the clock. A minute 34 remaining. Attack defensively and foul as soon as it comes in. Five-second call. Freeman looked for the timeout. And Tim Higgins says, no go. It was five seconds. Good call by Timmy Higgins also. A situation where Syracuse has to answer quickly. Jim Beheim knows this situation as well as anybody. You're down a bunch. Let's straight, stretch this clock out as far as we can. Try to keep this, these two teams here for the next 20 minutes if you can. Now the officials chatting because that is a gutsy call as well you could easily say yeah you got it it was close what? enough Tim Higgins says no that's five seconds and moving along really parks himself in a tough spot right underneath his own basket you're from that situation you don't really have any angle Timmy Higgins with a confident call on the left for Kevin Freeman right underneath his own basket you really park yourself in a tough spot a minute 34 left on the clock I think they're talking about the possession arrow possibly right now. They're ready to play. And Beheim's team with a chance to cut into the lead, trailing by 12. This Monday, CBS presents a new comedy about the magic of falling in love. Don't miss an all-new episode of Grapevine, Monday on CBS, right after The King of Queens. So Tony Bland will trigger in. His team is down 63 to 51. Quick hitter from long range if you have it. Oh, did he call timeout again? Yes, he, he did. did. Yep. Colin Ellaby. Great play off of the inbounds. UConn looking to pull off the victory. Man has always dreamed of getting to the other side. Some make it, some don't. But at least your phone calls get there. Because Agilent provides technologies for almost every kind of communications network. From way down here, to way up here. Defensively, El Amin stepping up with a deflection on the inbounds pass, and as he goes towards the corner, he jumps, 
Timmy Higgins really isn't seeing him right there, but you know what? He's hearing him, and Nelamin yelling out timeout, and he gets it. And UConn gets it in cleanly, mooring to Freeman. And the Huskies more than content to work the clock, and Syracuse stops it with a minute 26 left. I think that's a great opportunity to, to, with a guy, an official, knowing the game of basketball just then and being able to sense what's going on in the floor. And this officiating crew has a great sense of this basketball game. The Chevrolet most valuable players of the game, Tom Thomas from Syracuse and Khaled El Amin from UConn. Chevrolet will make a contribution to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic achievements and to assist those in financial need. Freeman at the free throw line, one and one. Hits on the first, 16 points for the senior. Jim Calhoun getting his club ready for next week. Still looking at the clock with 126 left in this ball game, but maybe a little message for the rest of the Big East that these guys aren't going to pack up their bags and go home. Two out of two for Freeman. Sixty-five, fifty-one, to UConn. Don't forget Stanford, UCLA. When we're finished here in Hartford. Hart down the lane and a foul called. Stops the clock with a minute 17 left. Jim Calhoun just as energetic and as excitable as he was the first day he came on this campus 14 years ago. Despite winning a national championship, you would never know. He continues to put the pressure on his players and expect the best. And the beauty of that also is the fact that you get a national championship, you might expect, well, now I can relax, turn the throttle down. And it's interesting to watch him work. And we got a great opportunity for two hours yesterday to watch his team. I tell you, they were practicing hard yesterday, as, as we both spoke about. And also that label is now gone. He is no longer considered one of the best coaches out there to have never won a championship. Right. He's got that ring. Oh, I, I always thought he was a terrific coach, no matter where he's been. Syracuse stopping the clock with a minute 11 left. Connecticut Huskies, annual report. Take a look at last year. They win a national championship. Everybody feels that UConn has dropped down a couple of notches this year, but the numbers don't necessarily indicate it. One thing that you can't see, though, is what they do defensively. And without the presence of a Ricky Moore and, of course, the offense of a Rip Hamilton, there have been some growing pains for this year's version of the Huskies. There's no question that when you look at it, it takes time to find the chemistry, and that's been the problem. You know, they're a backcourt-driven team, and Mooring and Elamin really not clicking all the time as well as they would have liked, but and this afternoon, just a good effort. That's all he got out of his team right here. Let's challenge him and go play. Freeman patting his stats. 18 points, 9 rebounds. Number one, Stanford and UCLA coming up next right here on CBS. One minute left. Thomas with a left hand. Able to drop it home. 13 points for Etan Thomas. Some pressure, but they throw over it. Yeah, they go by it. That's the second time they've gone by it. Number one, it's a good play, but it takes time off the clock. Here's Mori. And will float it to the other side. And now UConn in a game of keep away. Foul call near the midcourt line with 42.6. Jim Beheim's team will go into the Big East tournament on a down note. After starting the season 19-0, they went 5-3 in their next eight games. And you can tack on their fourth loss of the year here today. Losses to Seton Hall, Louisville, St. John's, and now UConn. And in the St. John's game, I think it took a little starch out of them also. A great game at the Garden a couple of three games ago for them. But you start to guess, second guess. What it really points to me, though, is that you can't expect anybody to run right through the Big East tournament next week. One out of two for Mooring. And UConn leads it 67 to 54. 11 points, eight rebounds for Mooring. Knocked away with the speed. And Robertson picks it up. Shot clock has been turned off. UConn fans in celebration mode. And they answered the call this afternoon also. They've been noisy pretty much the whole afternoon. Oh. 
What a way to end it. The alley-oop and the throwdown. El Amin to Mori. Maybe one with the shot clock. They could have run that out, too. Maybe one next week. Connecticut will be thinking about it. So will Syracuse for sure. It's over. UConn ends the regular season with a victory. They knocked off Syracuse. 69 to 54, the final from Hartford. Coming up next, number one, Stanford taking on UCLA. That's coming up right here on CBS. So, for Jim Spinarco, I'm Ian Eagle saying so long from the Hartford Civic Center. Our final score, UConn 69, Syracuse 54. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports, home of the NCAA Basketball Championship. Before you do this or this or this, you want to have this and this and this. You'd be surprised how much of our technology goes into your day. So for this, 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 or this, or this, we're Siemens. We can do that. Tonight, do millions watch Walker for his wit and wisdom? I have my moments. Of course they do. But they keep coming back for the action. Chuck Norris is Walker. CBS Tonight. For king-size comedy, the address is CBS. Hi, everybody. I'm Joe Tessitore. Don't go anywhere. More UConn coverage coming up. Post-game show coming your way in mere moments.